It's day 28. Food has lost its taste. Water's running low. If I could just see the sun one more time. Things are shutting down. Borders are closed. Airport's locked down. Jake, it's day three. Yep, but it feels like it's day 28. It feels like it's day 28. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, okay, like all right, all right. Hey, Jess, we hope you're doing well. We hope you're getting through this. Have a great day. It's going to be an awesome day. Hi, and welcome again to Equipers at Home. Fantastic to be with you all. I know you're all doing amazingly because you all have faith. And it's so good for Equipers Church to join together, yeah. one in spirit, one in heart, and one family. So let's worship, shall we? Yes. So, this is your time to turn the volume up. singing or not to great atmosphere he responds to faith yeah and so by faith we lift him up by faith we sense that he's here by faith we welcome you lord we welcome you into, thank our, you, into our midst thank you father that you are connecting us you're yeah. uniting us thank you lord that we're all in connection we're covered by you thank, thank you father Jesus. Oh 
abide his presence in you. Sing with faith. with that statement that miracles are taking place as we declare your name. Yeah. The name of Jesus that is high above every other name, yeah. above every hardship, every challenge, every difficulty, yeah. every frustration, every yeah. limitation or lack or weakness. He is high above it, yeah. which means when we declare the name of Jesus, we don't have to lower ourselves to our circumstance, but His name, the power of His name, we can rise up in yeah. victory. And so if you have a need today, if you have any one of those things, a frustration, a limitation, a worry, we'd really love to pray with you today that uh, in the name of Jesus, that He would break through on your behalf, that, that He would encourage your heart, that He would provide, that He would heal. And so if that's you, uh, come on, just w wherever you're sitting, why don't you lift your hands as a sign of surrender, as a sign of Jesus, I do need your help. And I'm asking, I'm asking in your name for, that, that you would help me in this situation. Why don't you lift your hands as we pray and agree together. Lord, I thank you that your name is a firm foundation that we can stand on. Your name, when we declare it, it brings healing and it brings breakthrough and blessing in every situation. So for every challenge, for every heart and household, for every family that is needing you to break through on their behalf, we thank you that now you are shifting things and moving things, that blessing might come in, healing might come in, that, that, that every need would be met, God. And we just declare, Father, that peace would reside on every heart and in every household that peace would be their guide and peace would be their guard. Lord, that even in a challenging situation, they would know your power and your presence to bring them peace and to bring them breakthrough. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, I'm so glad we get together like this. I'm so glad we have Wayne and Libby and the team leading us in worship. It's a dream come true. You know, pastors say all the time, you can't have Wayne and Libby lead worship in your living room. Well, now you can. <laughs> so I hope, I just hope you've been enjoying our services together online. I know I have. Yeah. What we're going to do right now is we're going to get straight into the Word. Yes. So if you want to take a seat, if you haven't already, uh, grab your Bible, grab a notebook. Um, and and we, we are going to get into the Word. I want you to turn to Mark and chapter 5. And this is one of my favourite passages. Um, I have a lot of them, but this is one of my favourite passages in the Bible. Um, but before we go into this passage, uh, I'm, I'm just going to show you a photo. A photo is going to pop up on your screen right now. That is my incredibly gorgeous son. Aww. 
and uh, he is so cute and he's such a blessing and he's such a joy in our lives. His name is Malachi and that is my dad with Malachi. Now, this is one of my favorite photos because this photo really displays the goodness and the faithfulness of God. Most of you who know me will know the story. Uh, you will know uh, that my home and my family and my background, we, I, I grew up in a broken home. I grew up in a home that was filled with love and amazing times, but it was also filled with uh, times of hardship and anger and violence. And because of this, there was a lot of loss of hope and security. And as a child, children don't know how to navigate those kinds of situations. And so I lost hope quickly. Uh, and, and then I found myself in the house of God, perhaps like you are today, obviously not a physical church, but here online with us. And I heard a message of hope. And because of that message of hope, this young heart, I was 14 at the time, I asked Jesus to come into my to my life. But many years before that, as a child, when my home was being broken up, I prayed a prayer that any nine-year-old would pray, God, if you're real, could you, could you fix somehow my family? Little did I know that at the point that that nine-year-old girl prays a prayer, that a God in heaven moves. Wow. Yeah. And so I share this story with you because we find ourselves in uncertain times. We find ourselves where perhaps we may be asking the question, God, I, I prayed a prayer, but I'm not seeing any, any, any changes or any shifts. Can I, tell, can I encourage you? I, I prayed that prayer as a child. And this photo that, that you had seen earlier, that's a good 20 years later. <laughs> and so there's a value in being able in uncertain times, being able to hold on to truth because God does move. This is a miracle. My dad cuddling my boy, he, that God has brought our family together in such miraculous ways. I never could have imagined and I, I want to I wanna just say that is our God. Yeah. Like our God does stuff like that every day. Not only do, uh, is he the God that we read about in the Bible with David and Goliath, right? That does this incredible miracle. But uh, our God also listens to the prayers of nine-year-olds yeah. who are desperate. And he will listen to your prayer as well. This is our God. But in uncertain times, as we do find ourselves in, we, we, we are faced with how do I navigate this situation? And I really would just like to share with you a few keys from my own life that between the prayer and the promise, what have I done to hold on to in between, to hold on to faith in the in between, in that gap? It's between the prayer of God, can you move, and the promise being fulfilled, how can I hold on? And really, for me, it has come down to a, to, to, to a choice, a simple one, not necessarily an easy one, a simple one, and it's the choice between fear or faith. Right, yeah. And that's where we find ourselves in Mark and chapter five. So we're gonna read the scripture together and we'll start in verse 21. I'm reading from the NLT version. It says this, Jesus got into the boat again and went back to the other side of the lake where a large crowd gathered around him on the shore. Then a leader of the local synagogue whose name was Jairus arrived. So this is a leader of a local synagogue. This is a guy who has spent his life following Jesus, okay? Following God, following the law. He, he saw Jesus and he fell at Jesus' feet pleading fervently with him. He says, my little, my little daughter is dying. Please come, lay your hands on her, heal her so she can live. And then four of the most beautiful words, Jesus went with him. Mm. Don't you love that? That this, uh, this guy comes in desperation and asks, Jesus, can you, can you please come to my house? Jesus doesn't even say a word. He just, okay. 
<laughs> and he goes and he follows. That is a loving and a kind and a listening God. So Jesus went with him and all the people followed. Then in the following verses, uh, if you will probably be familiar with the scripture where a woman shows up on the scene. And we know when girls show up on the scene, things just, they seem to change very quickly. And so this girl shows up on the scene. She's been suffering for a long period of time. She needs healing. She touches the hem of Jesus's garment. When she does that, healing flows through her body. Jesus says to his disciples, there are all these, uh, someone's touched me and power has gone from me. The disciples reply, Jesus, there's so many people around you. Everyone's touching you. What are you talking about? And he says, no, no, someone touched me with faith. And, and, and power has gone. Anyway, this, this woman says, uh, it was me, Jesus. And Jesus says this, go, your faith has made you well. An incredible story in the middle of a story. And I, I sometimes read that and forget that there's a wider story going on, but we pick up in verse 35. While he, Jesus, was still speaking to her, messengers arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. They told him, your daughter is dead. There's no use troubling the teacher now, but Jesus, but Jesus. I don't, I don't know what's going on for you at this time, but I just really sense that this, I just really feel like the Spirit of God is just saying that there are people who have been disappointed in this time that dreams that you have held in your heart during this, especially during this time of lockdown have died but Jesus, yeah. Yeah. and he said, don't be afraid, yeah. just believe. Yeah. And I, I just, I really believe this is a word that some of you need to hold on yeah. to today. Yeah. 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 I know that outlook may seem bleak, but Jesus yeah. said, yeah. Don't be afraid. That's the choice. That's the choice in the uncertain time. There are many things we don't have a choice over, but the choice we do have is whether we be afraid or not, or whether we have faith. Yeah. Yeah. That's the choice we have. That's what we have control over. Don't be afraid, have faith. Then Jesus stopped the crowd. He wouldn't let anyone go with him except Peter, James, and John. And if you're taking notes, I've got three points for you. And the first point here, if you're gonna choose faith, Faith, to choose faith is to choose your allegiance. Yeah. And so uh, really, if you can imagine Jairus in this time, he's standing there, he has asked Jesus for help. Jesus has effectively said, yes, I, I'll do it, I'll do it. But in the, in the middle of the journey, it seems like Jesus has disappointed Jairus. His daughter's died. And in that moment, that's the choice. That's a hard choice, the choice of your allegiance. And really the question today that I wanna to pose to you is your allegiance to what has happened or is your allegiance to what could happen? And in this moment, there is, a, there is an opportunity where we as a people of faith can make a choice that we are going to have an allegiance to what God has said, to what Jesus has said, and not what we have seen. Yeah, wow. right? right? And so come, come, come on up, you can just let some faith arise in you yeah. today, yeah. that we must, to choose faith is to choose an allegiance yeah. to what God has said, and not yeah. necessarily what we see, because we know that faith wow. comes by faith hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Right. So if faith is gonna rise up, it is by what we hear and what we hear by the Word of God. Now listen, to have questions in this time is, is fine, is good. God loves questions. He's not afraid of our questions. In fact, to have questions is healthy, but to hold God hostage to those questions is not. And sometimes when we hold God hostage to our doubts and to our questions, it, it creates an atmosphere in our lives that fulfills our doubts. Mm -hmm. wow. yeah. And it, it can even be a block to the power of God working in our very today. Wow. Not understanding the situation. Can you imagine Jairus? 
just not understanding what is going on. Jesus said, yes, and now my daughter has died. What do I do? Not understanding the situation and what's going on around us, that's okay. But restricting our spiritual lives to what we do understand, that's not. Why? Because as Pastor Wayne has already led us so wonderfully today, God responds to faith. God does not respond to our demands for control. And so faith is a space that we can move into. And and, and I'm not saying at all that it's an easy thing to do. It's not. But God gives us the grace to walk out every step toward breakthrough. Uh, and even though all there, there may be uncertainty around us, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8 says this, and God is able to make all grace. Come on, turn to the person next to you, say all grace. All grace. God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having sufficiency in all things may have an abundance of every good work. How great is that verse? that in all things that we may be required to do in the step forward toward the miracle that God gives us grace to do that. And so for you, for you tuning in today, I really pray that that choice between faith and fear, though it may be difficult, that you would choose your allegiance to your breakthrough, mm-hmm. to the miracle working God. Yeah. And here's the thing is I, I know from experience that if, if we don't choose to step forward in faith, then we are held hostage yeah. by our past. Yeah. And what does that mean for our reality? It means that we're very likely to repeat it. Yeah. For example, if I never stepped forward in relationship with God to teach me healthy relationships, security, love, identity, then I may be doomed to repeat uh, the wounds of my rejection. And that's what it is to step forward into your allegiance to God. So I I just want to encourage you to choose faith is to choose allegiance. Number two, if you're taking notes, is to choose faith is to choose an action. Don't you love that? Who I just I, I love just taking action. I love having a good conversation, but in the end, I want to move to action. And here's the thing: Jesus doesn't want us just to have a, a great time together. Although I love having a good time together, but it's actually really important that from this place we take a step forward and activate something, yeah. because we can be a te- we, we can be tempted to agree that this is a fantastic thing to do but actually to then move on it on Monday, to move on it today uh, is something very different. Now Jairus, what I loved about him is that he moved. He moved to do something. Now, the, the clarification that I wanna make is this. There are many things at that moment that Jairus could have done, but for the miracle, there's only one thing he should have done. What he could have done at that moment was go home and take care of all the funeral preparations. What he could have done that moment was go home and comfort his family. There were many things on his to-do list that would have just appeared straight away as soon as he heard that message. But for the miracle, the only one thing he should have done was just follow Jesus. And in this time, there are many things that we could do. But but the action, the faith action is, come on, where is Jesus moving? Move there, go there, follow there. He said, uh, uh, Jairus says, Jesus, help me. And Jesus says, okay, let's go. Come on, follow me. And I, 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 I think sometimes we ask Jesus to do stuff for us and then we want to do it our own way. But this isn't Burger King, man. This is not Burger King religion. We don't just do it our, have it your way. You know, that, that's not how it is. And so in the kingdom, it's not, it's not Burger King. In the kingdom, when Jesus moves, come on, that's where the miracle is. There are many things we could do to fix our situation, but um, in, for, for miracle working power to be activated, we gotta move where Jesus moves. And who knows, Jesus might be moving toward forgiveness. And it, come on, would you have the faith to step and maybe forgive? Jesus may be moving towards the mending of a relationship that perhaps has been broken for many years. Come on, would you move? And I, I pray I pray today that you don't just hear this message and be encouraged, but you be encouraged 
to move. Okay, and the final point today is to choose faith, is to choose your agreement. This is one of my faves, fam. We're going to read, right? Verse 39 in chapter 5. He, Jesus, went inside and asked, Why all this commotion and weeping? The child isn't dead. She's only asleep. And the crowd laughed at him. Catch this. But he made them all leave. And he took the girl's father and mother and the three disciples into the room where the girl was lying. Holding her hand, he said to her, Talitha Koum, which means little girl, get up. And the little girl who was 12 years old immediately stood up and walked around and they were overwhelmed and totally amazed. What I love about this section of scripture is Jesus walked into this room and in the room, there would have been a lot of well-meaning people. There would have been a lot of people close to the family, but there were also a lot of voices that were contrary to faith. And Jesus says, Jesus, he doesn't, He just directs them to leave the room. Uh, You can go now. And I I love that. I I love that. I think we allow too many people in our world that have opinions, Mm. but no authority to actually change the situation. We have, there's lots of talk, but not necessarily a lot of wisdom. And the example I think that we read here is not about removing people from our lives, but removing competing voices of faith, competing voices that perhaps are fearful voices, but to remove those voices from the decision-making center of our lives. We need to remove those voices from the room, from the place of our deepest vulnerability. Come on, what's going on here? This this, this man's legacy, this child has died, his, his future, and, and what could happen in the next five minutes could change the game forever because Jesus is in the room. The last thing you want is people going, oh, are you sure? I don't know about this Jesus guy. No, he's done miracles before. I don't know he'll do it now. There, there, there are some voices that are, are just not great to have around in the decision-making space of your life, in the place of deepest vulnerability. And I specify that because the place of our deepest vulnerability is the place of our deepest connection. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good. The Word of God puts it like this, that we're, when we are weak, He is strong that His power is made perfect in our weakness. So when we are weak, that is an instant connection point for God to come and strengthen us. That's a place of connection. That's what we see Jesus doing right there with Jairus. We don't hide that, that place of our of deepest vulnerability. It's It is wisdom to open that up to Jesus. Why? Because He created us. God created us. He knows us. He's seen everything we've gone through. And above all that, He loves us deeply and dearly. And when we let Him into those vulnerable places, He's able to partner with us and and allow miracle working dead raising to life, healing kind of power. And I I say all that excited because I have literally seen it happen in my life. I have seen the dead situation of my family come together in in ways, and not the way that I imagined it to be, but way better way better. And so I I just want to encourage you, that place of deep vulnerability, that is a place of connection. Come on, allow Jesus into the room. But also understand that Jesus, it wasn't just Jesus in the room. There was the mother, there was the father, and there was also three disciples. And I want to highlight that the place of struggle, of challenge, of uncertainty, uh, the place of weakness is also the place of a great connection for community. Good. And this is the place. Now is the time for the community of yeah. God to yeah. come yeah. together. Yeah. And I know it might be scary because perhaps you haven't trusted people before to come into that space, but God didn't create us to live life in isolation, yeah. right? Not the isolation we're talking about right now. 
but in emotional isolation. Yeah. God didn't, yeah. we weren't created to yeah. live like that. Yeah. We were created to live connected to Him yeah. and connected to others. And yeah. so I just, uh, there's, a, there's an interesting, uh, article that I had read uh, just recently. It's, it's an article called Opening Up by James Pennebreaker. I, I encourage you that you can purchase it and read it online. Uh, but he it, it was a nationwide research project that was completed in the United States. And it, it, uh, it was really a, a research project on trauma and its long-term health effects on adults. And the question was really why some adults recover, or some people recover from trauma and why some people don't. And w what he did was his hypothesis, I suppose, for the project was that the, the trauma that held the greatest social stigma, those were, the, those were the kinds of trauma that people really couldn't recover from. And so they, uh, they, they, they did the, the research was nationwide but what they found was that the hypothesis was disproved. That in fact, the nature of the trauma was next to irrelevant when talking about whether people would be healthy adults or not. But actually all that mattered was whether or not on the other side of the trauma that this person was in loving, supportive relationship or community. If they had family, community, a support group, virtually every single person came back healthier than before, wow. no matter what the trauma was, wow. no matter the severity of the trauma. This is the way God has designed yeah. us. Yeah, sure. God has designed us with the resilience in us that we are able to recover and not just survive, but thrive in yeah, victory yeah, yeah, yeah. when we partner in connection and agreement with Him and with the community of God that He's put around us. And that's why it's so important now more than ever, come on, keep connecting. Keep connecting yeah. with those online groups right. around you. Keep right. connecting with the people right inside your home. Don't disconnect. Keep connecting as, as much as as you can with the body of Christ. This is the way God has designed us, not just to live, but to, but to recover yeah. from, some of, from some of the most traumatic things that life can throw at us. Yeah. And so today I'm gonna invite the team back up. And so today, those are three things. Come on, um, choose to choose faith is to choose your allegiance. To choose faith is to choose an action, to move with God. And to choose faith is to choose to come into agreement. Yeah. And when the community of God comes together, the Word of God says where two or more are gathered and yeah. agree in your name. Yeah. Yeah. What is bound on earth will be bound in heaven yeah. and what is loosed on earth will be loosed in yeah. heaven. So uh, we, we've done it already. We've come together and in the name of Jesus, we've gathered together and we've agreed on some things. And I wanna encourage you to continue to get into the discipline of agreeing with the community of God, the yeah. discipline of agreeing with the Word of God. To choose faith over fear is to choose where your agreement lies. And so wherever you are today, we're just gonna lift up some worship. And maybe, Maybe you need to choose your allegiance. No, no, I'm not going to, to be loyal to the dysfunction of my past, but I want to take a step forward in faith to the miracle working power of Jesus. Or maybe you're sitting in, 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 in your lounge and you're just saying, man, Jesus, I just, I just wanna activate my faith. Come on, show me, show me how I can be kind, how I can lend my strength or resource to another. Show me how I can forgive. Show me the kind of words that I, I, I need to speak in this relationship to, to, to find uh, restoration. Or maybe you're someone here and you've been living in community, but you've still been living alone. And I just, I just really feel that the Holy Spirit wants to minister to your heart. 
that you know what it is to be in crowds, but to not have real relationship. As we lift up this worship song together, I just really believe the Spirit of God is going to come with His wraparound presence and embrace you. Come on, be open. Open your heart. Let's worship together. I can hope again. Let's sing it with faith. I can dream again. He's so faithful. You have filled my heart again. In your presence I really believe at this moment that heaven really is filling your room. That right now, even for some of you, it's there's a tenderness in your heart. And I just, I just want to say, you, you don't need to be kind of nervous or, or, or worried about it. That is the wraparound presence of God. And He comes to comfort. And He comes to heal. Yeah, thank you. And He comes to undo some things that have, set, that have set you in motion, even to believe that, that you're meant to live isolated and alone from others. And if that's, if that's you, I I just believe God is interrupting this this live stream just for you. And so I pray, I pray that in in your room right now, that His presence would so fill your room that you wouldn't be able to reason it away, that doubt wouldn't be able to come in or fear wouldn't be able to come in because your heart would be so filled with His love and His love would come in and begin to heal things and begin to soothe things in your heart. Peace, I speak over your heart. Peace, 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 in Jesus' name, peace. Thank you, Lord. Oh, He's so good. He's so good. I'd really like to pray for one more group of people. And it's the group of people who perhaps have not had that connection with Jesus. Mm. Let me tell you this, He has done everything to have connection with you. For this moment, He gave His life 
For this moment, God sent His Son to die on a cross that our sin and our, our wrongdoing and our mistakes and the, the things that, that, that scarred us and the things that are wrong in the world, that it wouldn't separate us from Him. For this moment, He died on a cross and He rose again to life that in this moment, you might understand you have the opportunity to be connected with the King of Kings, to be connected with your Creator, to be connected with your Maker, your Designer, that you might live life on purpose and in His design, fulfilled and working out and walking out a full life. So if that's you and you don't have connection with Jesus, I'd love to pray with you. Or maybe you've, you've had Jesus in your life before, but you've walked away from faith. And today you're saying, this, this is for me. This message was for me. I need to reconnect with my Saviour. It would be my pleasure, my honour to pray with you today. So if that's you, why don't you close your eyes? If you feel comfortable, you can lift your hands. It's just a, it's an international sign of surrender. As we pray, I'm going to pray a line. You pray the line after me. When you repeat this line, you repeat it with all the faith and hope that you can muster in your being. Let's pray together. Thank you, Jesus, for speaking to me this morning. I open up my heart and I ask you to come in. Thank you for dying on the cross and rising to life so I can have life with you. I choose life with you. I choose relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Oh, I am so celebrating with you today. I just believe this is a, a point of change. Yeah. For those of you who made uh, the decision today to follow Jesus, we would love to do all that we can to walk this journey with you. So um, just contact us online. The details will be up. Please, we, we, we just want to journey this with you because yeah. we aren't made to do life alone. So we want to do all that we can to help you, uh, to get you connected on one of our online groups. Um, and that, you know, after this lockdown is done, that there'll be a whole community just waiting to give you yeah. a big hug yeah. if that's what you're keen on, you know. Um, otherwise, um, I, I also believe that this, this service, the ministry that has taken place, that you'll look back on 10 years time at this moment and you'll know that was the time that yeah. things changed. Yeah. Yeah. And I really believe that for you today. That's well, we're so gonna good. go into our week celebrating and yes. victory and freedom yeah. because of what God has done. And one of the ways we love to do that is to pray. So why don't you stand to your feet, go on, loosen up, and we're gonna celebrate and praise today. Yeah.
heard from Pastor Esther, take that with you as you spend this week in connection with others. And um, God bless you. Just keep leaning into Jesus. He is all, all you need. Keep praising him throughout this week. We love you and God bless. Well, that was another fantastic message. It was indeed. Hey, we appreciate you coming with us on this journey as we continue to change the mode of church. Have a great rest of your Sunday and God bless. Thank you for joining us for Equippers at Home. To see how to give help and get help, head to equipperschurch.com forward slash at home. You'll also find more information on getting connected, prayer and giving in this season. God bless you. We'll see you next week.